My life as a book, day nine. It should be illegal to make kids do math when it's 80 degrees and sunny and the calendar reads August. I wait near the gate for mom to pick me up after prison camp and see Carly standing a few feet away. She spends most of the learning camp with three other girls who practice cheerleading routines between sessions. We've had a few conversations about Ginger the Hedgehog, but not much else. When Mom pulls up, I'm surprised to see Carly approach her car. What are you doing, I ask. My mother answers for her. Maria called and asked if I could pick up Carly today. By the time we get her back, Maria will be home from work. Thankfully, Carly doesn't try for the shotgun seat and slides into the back. We haven't even hit the 405 when my mother asks Carly about her summer reading. I keep telling Derek he would love one of the books on our list, Carly says. This boy and his dog meet this guy with a, I worked hard today. Can we talk about something else, I ask? Carly changes the subject by talking about her mother's landscaping company. And when we get to her house, I see she isn't exaggerating her mother's talents. Pink hibiscus weaves its way along the fence, and huge bushes of rosemary surround two palm trees on either side of the front door. Carly has to tell me what kinds of plants they are. Even though the smells want to coax me from the car, I still ask my mother if I can wait outside. She says Carly's mom will be home in a minute and insists I come in and wait with Carly. This wasn't my idea, Carly whispers as she unlocks the door, in case you think it was. Soon, Carly's mom pulls up in a small red pickup. She has long, dark hair like Carly's. When Mom accepts her iced green tea from her, I know we'll be here longer than a minute. Carly asks if I want to see Ginger. I follow her into the dining room where the hedgehog's crate takes up most of the table. She nibbles at the, carl at the carrot Carly gives her, then walks to the other side of the cage. Can your mom look at her? Carly asks. I want to make sure she's okay. She didn't eat much yesterday either. She hands me a glove, probably one her mother uses to landscape, and I take Ginger out of the crate and hold her like we're back in school. Mom comes in and examines Ginger. I haven't seen a hedgehog as a patient in years. I'm not much of an expert, but you can bring her in. I can call a colleague with more experience. It might be the change in location. They hate to be moved. Carly nods, and I put Ginger back in her cage. My mom and Mrs. Rodriguez head back to the kitchen. Hey, do you want to see what I made, Carly asks. I tell her, sure, but inside I'm thinking, if this involves dolls, tea parties, or karaoke, I'm grabbing onto that huge spider plant in the living room, smashing through the window, rolling onto the landscape lawn, and sprinting the whole way home without looking back. Carly leads me down to the playroom in the basement. The entire room is laid out in grids of fishing line crisscrossed from floor to ceiling. Because the lines are clear, they almost seem invisible. There are at least 50 of them, all fastened to the wall with wide, clear tape. You made this, I ask. She points to the other side of the room where a crystal bowl is upside down on top of a stool covered in purple velvet. I'm pretending this is a famous museum and that that's the largest diamond in the world. She nods towards the fishing line. This is the alarm system and I'm a burglar. I have to get to the diamond without triggering any of the motion detectors. Not that I would ever say so to Carly, but I'm very impressed. She tosses me a black ski mask and tells me to give it a try. I slip on the mask and limbo under the first line with no problem, but nail the second one with my shoulder. I make three more attempts before she asks for a turn. She puts on the mask, takes a deep breath, and moves across the room like a hybrid gymnast feline. The image makes me think of Joe Brennan with his stupid fantasy stories. But the person I really want to show this to is Matt. He and I could play this game for hours, hands down. Carly makes her way under the intricate web of detectors until she reaches the stool. She bends under the last one like she's going deep underneath a limbo pole, then turns ever so slowly to lift the fake diamond into her hands. I can't help but applaud. She puts the bowl back on the stool and removes her mask. I've had a lot of practice, she says. You want to try again? This time, I take off my sneakers before slipping on the mask. When my mother calls down, I ask if we can stay a little longer. She seems surprised but says yes. Carly shows me a few tricks, and by the time we leave an hour later, I've stolen the diamond twice. I scan the room one last time. You built this yourself and read all the summer reading books? She shrugged. It wasn't that hard. Somehow, she doesn't just seem, 
That just doesn't seem fair. Is this what my summer has come down to? Getting my butt kicked by the school's goody two-shoes? A call from Matt. It's Thursday night and Amy's favorite show is on, so she basically ignores me while I lie on the floor and rub Bodie's belly. He's back to his old self, but Mom still says he should rest. I wish she'd follow her own advice when it comes to taking care of me. Amy calls her best friend, Tina, during every commercial, and they ooh and ah over the celebrity actor playing the doctor on their stupid show. I want to go onto the roof and knock the satellite dish so the picture messes up, but it's raining and Amy's reaction would hardly be worth the effort of getting soaked. I grab the key and let myself into Mom's office. The receptionist keeps a canister of dog bones on her desk, and I grab a few to give to Bodie later. I check to see if Pedro is there, but unfortunately he's not. Inside, there are five dogs in large metal cages. They bark when I enter through the swinging door, so I do what I always do to calm them down, give them treats. Then I crawl into one of the empty cages, this time beside the Dalmatian. As I lie inside the cage, I run my fingers along the metal bars. This is the end of this reading. Please look for the uploaded page.